Hello, my name is Ian Harwood. I work for Rockwell Automation, Global Product Standards and Regulations Group. I'm based here in Europe. Um, and three or four years ago, I made a short video introducing this North American Standard Control Cabinet and talking a little bit about the terminology differences between the European and the American market, about some of the requirements of the regulations and standards, and a little bit about the pitfalls that you should avoid when you're building this kind of control assembly. Um, since then, my colleagues Stefano Moraro and I have spent a lot of time travelling around, um, making presentations to people, talking about um, cabinets, having customer meetings, and um, being asked questions. And a lot of those questions come back from different people, but it's pretty well the same question. So I thought this was an opportunity to tackle those those two or three frequently asked questions and uh, and record the answers, or what I feel are the best answers. Um, probably the first, pe first question people ask is, which standards do I need to meet? Um, well, it depends what you're doing. Um, there are certainly three standards you need to be aware of. Um, the first one of those is the standard for control cabinets, uh, so similar to the IEC 60204, or covering the same ground, is UL 508A. UL stands for Underwriters Laboratory, and the Underwriters Laboratory are one of the national recognised testing laboratories that are licensed by OSHA in America, Occupational Safety and Health Authority. Um, so they're one of several national recognised testing laboratories, but they also write standards, one of which is UL 508A. So that's the standard for control cabinets and one you certainly need to be aware of. If you're a machine builder or an OEM, you would also need to know about NFPA 79. NFPA is National Fire Protection Association. They're another standards writing body. They write standards for all kinds of stuff, not just electrical standards, so it could be buildings materials um, or, or, or anything else. So NFPA 79 is the electrical equipment of machines. That's another important standard. And the third, and the one that covers most things, is NFPA 70. And that's the National Electrical Code. That's how it's known in the USA. And that applies to all electrical installations, whether they're control cabinets, machines, or distribution boards, any power installation, NFPA 70 is the standard that will be used. So those are the three standards you need to understand if you're going to sell equipment and, and export to the United States. The second question we get asked a lot is, is CE marking any use? And if it's not, which mark the Americans want to see? Well, that depends. On the product, um, the Americans will want to see the UL mark. So these products comply to different standards, most of them to a standard called UL 508, but some to um, UL 98, uh, some to UL 489. Um, but they are marked with this UL mark. So the CE mark is of no value in America. They want to see their own mark on products. I've mentioned that this cabinet is built to UL 508A. From the cabinet's point of view, um, if you are a licensed assembler, then you can mark the cabinet as UL 508 listed, 508A rather listed. Or you can have it field evaluated by one of the national recognised testing laboratories. Doesn't matter which one. You can take your pick. Uh, and they will assess it to the standard UL 508A. Um, if you become accredited, then you get the license then to carry on marking those cabinets and building to that standard. But it's not mandatory to mark the cabinet. You, as, as any panel builder, can build this, and providing you stick to what it asks you to do in UL 508A, you can't mark the cabinet, but you can build to that standard, and that's perfectly acceptable. You've gone out and you've bought a, a NEMA-type cabinet, you've bought all UL-listed product, you use the appropriate cables and the appropriate colours and the right kind of terminations, you've kept to the spacings that are recommended, you've done all of that, that's a UL 508A cabinet. The difference is that when it goes to site, the authority having jurisdiction, those are the people who will connect this to the supply, or say it can be connected to the supply, the authority having jurisdiction, the AHJ, will come along and have a look at the cabinet. If it's got UL 508A listed on the door, he probably won't, he or she will probably not bother opening the door. 
If it doesn't, then they almost certainly will because they're going to sign something that says this is not going to catch fire, this is not a dangerous piece of equipment, and they want to satisfy themselves. So those are the things you've got to keep in mind. So CE marking not acceptable. Those are the three standards that are most important. The third question we get asked an awful lot is what about the selection of components? Do I have to be particular about the products I select? Well, I've already mentioned that they need to comply with the appropriate product standards for America. Um, and we, we talked in the previous video about being aware of miniature circuit breakers. The European standard miniature circuit breaker, probably not suitable for use, can be used as a supplementary protector, but that's to a lower, a, a different standard rather than 489, which it needs to be to go in this control cabinet. But once you've decided that you've selected products that meet the appropriate product standards, then there is only one other thing I would mention that comes up a lot. And that is that when you're in the branch circuit and on a motor starter, so here we've got a motor circuit protector, contactor overload, and they're all from the same manufacturer. And they almost always will be because that combination of those three devices, or in this case those two devices, has to be UL listed. It has to be an accepted combination. If it's not, you can't use it. So if the AHJ opens your control cabinet and sees circuit breaker from one manufacturer, contactor from another, overload from another, then that's a red flag. He will immediately recognise that that's not a listed combination, or it's very unlikely to be, and that means it shouldn't be being used. So, golden rule, buy those products from the same manufacturer. So, three questions mentioned at the beginning. I think I've answered those three questions. If you'd like to enter into a bit more dialogue, then we run seminars and conversations along these lines. Um, and if you go onto our website, rockwellautomation.com, and look for North American Standards, there's a landing page where you can click through to the standards I mentioned, NFPA and UL standards. You can click through to the Amer American National Standards Institute, ANSI. Uh, you can click through to all of the national recognised testing laboratories. And you can see where we're running seminars and events that you might want to come along to and learn a little bit more.